Let's talk about these flow actions for Quip that we've created to help you connect Quip to Salesforce using Lightning Flow. The first one we're going to take a look at is get data from Quip. So this is basically about grabbing cell values from inside of Quip Sheets and then having them in flow so that you can use them to do useful things. And the use case we're going to look at is this one. So what we're going to do here, and you can see I'm using the new Flow Builder uh, available in Winter 19, uh, is I'm going to get some contacts. I'm going to do a query, grab some Salesforce contacts. And then I'm going to loop over each one of those contacts, and I'm going to get some Quip data. And then I'm going to basically modify the contact with that Quip data. And then finally, I'm going to update all of those contacts at once. And the one use case that this might be useful for is if you have people in your, work, in your workforce, if you have, is if you have employees that don't actually have Salesforce licenses, uh, and you want them to be able to participate with Salesforce. Now, Quip is pretty universally accessible. So what I've done here is I've created a data sheet for a couple of my employees. So I've got one for Lauren Boyle, and I've got one for Susan Ferris. And you can see that basically each of the, you know, there's sort of several questions that are being asked here. And in some cases, uh, they can pick, use Quip's ability to pick from a list, or they can just type in a value. Uh, and so what I'm going, what I want to do is I want to use flow so that I can take the values from these Quip documents and update them into my contacts. So if we go here and we, and we can see that if we look at Lauren's contact information, and we go down here, you can see that right now we have basically nothing. We, we've got some fields here in Salesforce in the contact and we've got nothing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this and let's run it in the debugger. And it's going, it's doing the looping, it's connecting to the Quip documents, it's doing, it's gathering the information, it's updating, and we're basically done. So you can see that we, it was looping across three contacts because I limited it to three contacts. It was contacting the Quip sheet. Uh, and OK, it looks like there's an error message from my earlier testing. So here you can see the errors coming through from the flow action. Foobar doesn't exist. You know what? I know exactly why that's going on. If we go back here, I had been testing this and had stuck the name foobar in for the file name, but we don't have a quip doc named foobar, do we? The name of this quip doc is data sheet for Lauren Boyle, and the name of this one is data sheet for Susan Ferris. So what we need to do here is we need to dynamically assemble this name each time based on the contact we're looking for. So I've got in my manager, I've got a formula here that does that. You can see that it basically says whatever the current contact's name is, take that and prepend it with data sheet four. We're going to call that constructed name. So let's go back here and replace this with constructed name. Save that. Save it as a new version. And now let's try running that again. So I could have edited that out, but I wanted to demonstrate to you how you can learn from uh, the debugging information from the error messages that have come through. So here it's happening successfully now, and we're pulling in data like snow rabbit chomping blaze and uh, the fact that this check mark is checked. And so we're grabbing that from Lauren Boyle, and you can see here we have this all. And so now let's go and show go back and let's go and take another look 
and you can see that my Salesforce contact has been updated. So I have taken data in Quip and I've updated it. Now let's change something here. So let's go over to Lauren. Let's now, it's Lauren, let's remember, doesn't have a Salesforce uh, license, but let's say that she changes her vote to Ice Fishing Astro. And now I can go here and let's run this again. And now let's take a look. And you can see the update was immediate. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking advantage of the fact that Quip can be changed. Now keep in mind that another great thing about Quip is that you can have multiple people collaborating. So if this isn't just Lauren Boyle's data sheet, maybe this is a maybe this is a sheet that's used by an entire project team. They could be changing this as new information came on and the flow would pick up that information and do, do what it needed to do. And of course the flow, once it has these fields, it isn't limited to working with a, this particular contact. It could do any number of things with, the, with those records as well. All right, let's take a look at a couple more of the new Quip flow actions. We're going to use stored data in Quip document and clone Quip document. And this is what that flow is going to look like. We're going to use them, use two of those actions in one flow. What the use case here is all about is we want to start with a group of contacts and we want to generate some custom Quip documents full of useful Salesforce data for each of those contacts and then email them a custom email that gives them a link to their custom Quip doc. So you can see how this could be useful for sharing out Salesforce data with non-Salesforce users uh, and a variety of other scenarios. So we're going to do a query to get the contact information and then we're going to iterate over each of those contacts and we're going to clone a template. So if we look down here, if we look in here, you can see that it's looking for a, an existing Quip document called report template. And that is right over here. So here's what report template looks like. And you can see that it's pretty simple. Uh, and we are going to take the clone and we're going to give it a name. We're using another formula to do that. And then we're going to take that newly created clone and we're going to put some data into it. So we're going to take data from the contact record. It could come from other places as well, but we're just going to use the contact record. Uh, so we're going to take, for example, the name of the contact and we're going to place it to the right of the cell that has the word name. So you can see it's going to look for this cell that has the word name. It's going to go to the right one cell and it's going to write the value of Salesforce data into that cell. And you can see here that we've got the ability to have up to five different pieces of information targeted to five different cells with this one action. And of course, you could link more of these up if you needed to. So we're going to take something like your stated expertise, which we sucked in uh, to Salesforce in an earlier example, and we are going to uh, write some values right there. So let's run this. Uh, and then we're going to do, we're going to send the email, but uh, first let's run it and then we'll run it in the debugger as usual so that we can, we can uh, spot any problems uh, and uh, I don't expect that we'll run into any on this, this run. And it looks like from my, all of my traces, the things are looking good. So, and let's go look in our folder. And you can see there they are, they just popped up. So if we pop open Lauren's, you can see that we've got the data, it's all been populated in here. We did lose the formatting, that's just something that Quip doesn't quite support yet. Um, so uh, we'll hopefully get that soon. But we did, we got all the critical data. And then if we look uh, at uh, the inbox, you can see that a piece of email just came in. This is what one of those contacts was pointed at this particular email address so that I could demonstrate this. And you can see that we basically took the URL of the newly created Quip document 
we put it together using an email template. That's basically, uh, that's actually a feature of Flow uh, called a text template. You can see here, we've basically created uh, a text body and inserted a merge field. And we can click on this and it will take, the user can click on this and it will take them right to the appropriate link. So that is a look at a couple of the new Quip Flow actions. There's a few others that we uh, haven't had a chance to build demos for. If you take a look here, there's an add row to Quip sheet that lets you add an entire row to a sheet using Salesforce data. It's good for appending a constant stream of updates onto a sheet. And then there's a couple user management uh, uh, flow actions that allow you to add a user to a folder and remove them from a folder so that you could add quip foldering to your onboarding. Someone joins the company based on what group they are, maybe they should be automatically added to some folders. You can make that completely automated. And then finally, some document management, uh, a couple of uh, the early useful tools here, renaming is now something that can be done uh, and uh, adding a Quip document to a folder. So actually moving Quip documents to folders, assigning them to folders now possible. So we hope you find these useful and uh, let me know if uh, you, uh, what, let me know what you wanna see next and uh, we'll keep taking advantage of what all of the APIs that Quip makes available to integrate it more tightly with Salesforce using Flow. All right, let's take a look at a very powerful combination of Flow, Salesforce, and Quip. We're going to take multiple records from Salesforce. We're going to create a Quip table out of them. And then later, we're going to start making changes to individual cells in that table as a result of Salesforce updates. Okay, I have an empty quip table here and it's got column headers and these column headers roughly correspond to some of the fields on my contact. So we've got first name, last name, we've got something called vote for winter 20 icon and if we look at this contact you'll see that of course there's a first and a last name and then I've got a couple fields here um, that are similar. And so we've got some data in this Salesforce contact and several just like it. So what I want to do is I want to automate the creation of a spreadsheet that shows all of the data of multiple contact. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a query of the contacts like I did in, in my previous demos. I'm going to go a little farther here. I'm going to pull some account data that's related to the contact data because I want to demonstrate how you can pull data from different Salesforce records and combine them into a single Quip sheet. So whereas in the previous demos, I was content to have the Quip sheet show the account ID, which is that ugly string of ID information. What I really want is the account name, the friendly name, the real name. So I'm going to pull that with this query here and then I'm going to store them in the Quip sheet. So once again, here's my empty Quip sheet. So let's let's start the process running and actually watch it populate in real time. We go over here. Here start here the data comes. And sometimes data comes a little faster than in Quip's refresh, and you actually have to refresh the screen to, to, uh, to, to make sure all of the data is there. But you got the idea. We've just pulled in all of the data here. Okay, so now let's update a single field inside this sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up this record, Tim Boyle, we're going to put a screen up in Flow, we're going to make a change, and Flow is going to automatically update this in, the, in Quip. So let's run this, and we're going to change Honey Thief Cody to uh, Salmon Chompin' Cody. And let's hit next, go over here, keep an eye on this. And there's the change. 
and we can go back here and change it to something else like picnic basket Nabin Cody and there is the change again so you can see that we're able to identify specific cells so how is that being done let's take a look at this basically what we've got here is the add row to quip sheet flow action uh, we are specifying the name of the quip sheet we want to modify right here that could be passed in uh, or it could be built with a formula as we've shown in previous demos and then what I'm doing is I'm specifying how to identify uh, the existing row that we want to work with and the way that's done is you pick the columns that you care about and you set this value use value as index for updates so by setting that to true for number four column which is first name we're basically saying take the data that is in this flow variable from upstream and try and match try and find a matching row that has this has the same first name value as this as this value and you can do this with multiple columns so here I'm also matching on last name so basically because the record coming in has Tim and Boyle as first or last name it's identifying this row and saying okay we're gonna update the values in this row instead of just add a row onto the bottom and then the rest works the same way a normal add does you specify the column you want you specify the flow variable from upstream that you want to load into that and that's all you have to do these flow actions are currently available at the unofficial community site lightningflow.net along with the flows that you've just seen in this video you can install those uh, and actually play around with them uh, and modify them so we hope you enjoy this and find it useful in making your Quip and Salesforce technology work together.